Hello everyone, this is Dino Don again with another update on my War Corsair project. Uh, this update for this week is a couple days late, uh, being a Memorial weekend. Yesterday was Memorial Day, today's Tuesday. Uh, I've been working non-stop on this since basically last Thursday. I spent all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all day yesterday, and all day today working on this thing. Um, these last three days, today, yesterday, and Sunday, was strictly all wiring. Uh, and then before that, I was working on the push rods for the flaps assemblies, controls, putting in the uh, plated and chromated push rods, um, replacing the short bolts with longer bolts. That was all this work up in here. And then I had to, I'd riveted those earlier, but I had to get all these push rods in and hooked up. There's this one and then another one that runs up inside. They come down. So all those are put in. And these go out through the back to the two separate flaps. So I did those. And then the rest of the systems was these push rods here that control the doors. So I got those all done. Uh, the only thing left is the actuator pin. There's a block, as you can see, right there. There's a pin will go in there and it'll push up in on the linkage in there. It, it'll end up touching the gear somewhere in there. And that ends up pushing these doors closed from inside. So I got both of those done, got the flaps all done. Okay, then the second thing I did was the tail wheel assembly. You can see I had it torn apart. <clears throat> so I got that all done. Got it all painted, put back in. Problem was these holes were in a bad spot. The little turn buckles that uh, pulled the doors closed which I have off here. This is one of the turnbuckles. Uh, the other end of it's off, but uh, those are hinged in with a hinge pin so I can take the doors off. But anyway, the linkage attaches from here to the door. And so I got that fixed, repainted it. You can see where that was bolted together, like I said before. I repainted this, got the new leaf spring in, piece 4340, bent it there, put the 20 degrees on it there. So now if you look at this, is slightly angled forward. So once this airplane comes down and sets on the tail, that should be pretty much vertical. And then you'll notice this piece of aluminum I got on here. It's a block round piece. It's uh, bolted to a couple flat spots. There's a uh, snap ring underneath that holds it in. Then it'll be an E-clip up here once I get one. But these flats are meant, there'll be a, another metal bracket that'll be bolted in here, comes up. Then I need two pieces of spring steel that'll come back and lay across here. They'll bolt right in, they'll bolt up here on this piece, go straight back across this. And what that does is that allows that wheel to center. So when you're taking off, you don't want this tail wheel uh, moving around on you. So the springs will pretty much hold it center for you for taking off. And then uh, if you're on the ground in ground handling and you go to turn, when you step on the brakes, this has independent brakes left and right, uh, the force of this tail pushing as you're riding a brake can overcome that centering spring and allow this thing to pivot like it's supposed to. And then it'll, the springs, if it turns far enough wide on us, but it'll still be able to do this. But it'll pretty much center and lock itself for takeoff. So that's all done. The switch has been adjusted. Everything in here is finished except for adjusting these turnbuckles. And once I get power to the airplane again, I'll go in and um, disconnect one door let the gear fold up and then adjust the door and then so forth. Uh, these are the wires that go for the tail, tail lights that still go out into the tail cone area. And then this is the wiring that goes through the tail and goes to the elevator trim mechanism. That'll be on the right elevator, but I just have it wired up because I was working on that wiring today. So that's everything done there. So now we can go back into inside the cockpit and now you can see the difference in the wiring mm. before it kind of looked like a rat's nest in here. Uh, the lighting's pretty bad today because it's overcast but everything's cleaned up now. Mm. It was a real royal pain to get all this in there. I got one little wire left here. I can get a hold of the damn thing. This little wire is a dimming wire for this little elevator trim. 
the elevator trim is the buttons here. You have uh, up and down elevator and then left and right is for the flaps down and up, nose down, nose up with the trim. And then that will work. You'll see the indication in here there's a green LED right in the center. When it's neutral and then up and down trim. You can see I got all the switches back in. Got all the circuit breakers back in. And then over here are the up and down, or those are two fuel pump relays. And behind each one of those, they're attached to a screw. And the one side, the left side is a negative terminal, the right side is a positive terminal, and I have power coming off of the circuit breaker up to there, and then from there to ground down here. And what that allows me to do is take all those wires from the instrument panel and just attach them here as a breakout point for trim. Uh, those two pump, those two relays are for the fuel pumps, pump one, pump two, which are controlled by the switches down here. The top switch is the master switch, which will turn on that constant duty cycle solenoid, and that'll power up the bus bar. And then down there, that little black gizmo is a shunt for the amp gauge. So uh, I have all the power that goes to that bus bar, feeds everything through to the computer, the engine, the fuel injection, and uh, the only thing that's not through that is the hydraulic pump for the motor. That pump will pull, can pull upwards of 30 amps max. Uh, and the shunt and the gauge I bought is only plus 30, minus 30 amps. So everything on the airplane will go through that shunt to give me a, a reading on an amp gauge except for the hydraulic pump. Uh, the fuel pumps will be all go through that as well. So uh, that cable hanging right there is the ground that will attach to the tank to, for the ground for the fuel pumps and the ground for the sending unit. Uh, that's my new switch. I pulled off the panel and uh, wired in there so once the panel goes in it will be done. Alright, then we'll come around here to the front of the assembly. And what I did is I put in all these connectors. Once I get the panel in and get this stuff all plugged in, this will all be tie wrapped up. But those are all, all pretty much labeled as to which ones they plug into. And then at the same time I had to run six more wires out to here. I had to add those and then I put in all the, the remaining pins to get this back together. So I still have a lot of pins left if I need to add anything else to the engine. But the computer, it's uh, down in there. This is the bracket for the computer. It's the, the EEC relay that powers up the whole computer. And then these are, these are starter wires. Um, I think that's the uh, fuel level sending unit. And, and something else. But either way, everything's wired. <clears throat> and then that all comes down into here. And these the idea is I can come here and unplug this and remove the whole dash. I still have to get a plug for this turn bank. So and there's the back of the switch. It gets wired to power, um, solenoid, and starter. or Ignition power and then starter wire and then the landing gear switch goes in there. So that's pretty much where I've been at. Uh, this is the antenna. It'll be trimmed for whenever I where I decide to put the radio. I've got a handheld radio that'll be worked. And that goes all the way back into a, a base plane mounted underneath the foam in this section here. So the weather for, for a change has finally been really nice, but it's the temperature has dropped right now. It was it was 82 degrees in here this morning. Now it's 65. Humidity was over 70%. 75 or something like that. It's still humid, but a cold front just came in and I can you can really feel the cool damp air So that's where I'm at now uh, a lot of work. I did a lot of work So now that the flaps and the gear doors and basically all the wiring is almost finished. I need one more uh, heavy plug to hook up these two fuel pump wires and the ground wire and these will snake underneath here because the tank sumps down under here so they'll Alright folks, the uh, battery died on me. I didn't take a look at it before I started, but anyway, uh, these two and the ground wire will hook up to another 
uh, Molex connector, but I need to get a higher current one. You know, it's got to be able to withstand about 15 to 20 amps. So uh, I got to get a three prong and fix that up, and then that'll be done. So now, once I get all this finished, tied down, I'm pretty much at the point where I can get back on the epoxy work. Get the rest of this sanded, filled in. I'll have to put the tank on, put the foam seal around this for the tank to set on, pull it down with the, uh, the turnbuckles, get it where I need it so I can get the, get the tank lined up here and here. I may have to build another ledge inside of this for the tank to set on, seal it so if rain won't get in here. Uh, but then I can fill it and blend it all in. Uh, and then I'm going to work on the fuselage first, finish up, may have to do a couple touch-ups somewhere here and there on the fuselage, I don't know yet. The tail still needed a little bit of uh, touch-up work on it. There's still some spots here that I put some material down, but I haven't sanded out yet. So I'll have to sand that first, see how it looks, and then uh, double-check the fuselage through here, and then I'll get back on that. And as soon as I get the fuselage blended in, I have to uh, finish masking off around the windshield, cover this in, because all this framework has to be uh, smoothed out just like this. So. Sorry about that. So, uh, I think the weather's finally changed enough. Uh, it was like 90 some degrees in here, Thursday or Friday, um, but it wasn't that warm outside, but it was luckily only real low humidity, but it was warm. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. As soon as I tidy up this stuff, get the panel fitted and tested, then I'll get back to epoxy. And uh, I think the weather's like starting to say the weather should be good enough to get on the epoxy. It, uh, even though it might be, you know, 70, 80 degrees outside, it tends to get, you know, another 10 degrees in here. And that's only going to help with the curing of the epoxy. I still have the uh, canopy to, to work on, but that's no big rush right now. There's the framework for the canopy. Um, then as soon as the fuselage is sanded and filled, then I'll get the uh, wing panels put back on her, uh, get the seat put back in, give it an another coat of varnish. I'll have to make a uh, seat cushion in that for the plane eventually. So that's where we're at today. So sorry it took me a couple extra days to get this done, but I wanted to get most of that wiring in so you could see what it looks like. Uh, pretty much before it's finished. And then after the wings are done and on, then I can go ahead and finish up this firewall, get uh, matting stainless steel put on there. But uh, the goal is to have her done sometime the end of summer, end of fall. I want to get this thing done, uh, get the canopy molded and all that stuff. All right, well, that's going to do it for this update. Um, I'll keep working on her. Right now, we're kind of slow at the shop, so I've had some time off to work on this. So I've I've literally put eight to ten hours a day on this thing for the last six days. Uh, so now it's time to go ahead and sit down and take a break. All right, everyone. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. Appreciate it. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. I'll answer them as they come in. All right, so until the next one, this is Dino Don out.